Greetings, Ben Murray here with another edition of SaaS Metric School. Welcome, doing this from the road. So today talking, what is CAR and why do I care? Yet another SaaS metric. We know there are tons of SaaS metrics, but CAR is an interesting one to consider. And I feel that this was an obscure metric years ago, but now it is widely used. Even if you're not referring to it as CAR, the concept is out there when people describe how they're looking at their current ARR or forward-looking ARR, oftentimes they're referring to CAR. So let's break this down. So again, CAR can stand for Committed Annual Occurring Revenue or co Contracted Annual Occurring Revenue. There are two camps there. But the big point here is that this is signed revenue, it's executed revenue or executed bookings. Even if it hasn't pushed to revenue yet, we have a signed deal with a customer that has not influenced our revenue yet. It's not our pipeline. It's not the last stage of our pipeline and, and it's almost gonna be signed. It's gotta be executed. It's gotta be a done deal to include it in CAR. So that's a big point. No pipeline stuff in our CAR number. So CAR, the whole point with CAR is to represent the maximum value of our current ARR. And we're trying to get the most credit again for ARR because you think about SaaS valuations, we look at ARR multiples. Do I want to use an ARR number from 12 months ago, six months ago, today, or maybe an estimate based on what's been signed and what is almost guaranteed. I mean, it's not guaranteed customers can default, but almost guaranteed to flow into our revenue to push our car number higher. And that's the whole point. What's my maximum value of car at a point in time? So the components of car we're taking our current MRR of our SAS PL multiplying by 12 to represent our ARR number. I know the purists out there will say, well, you know, there are debits and credits and timings with our revenue, and that's true. But a simple way to estimate ARR is take our MRR of our SAS PL multiply by 12. And then we're going to add ARR on top of that has that has not pushed through revenue yet. So for example, if I just signed that big 1 million ARR deal. We haven't implemented, we haven't invoiced it yet, but it is going to flow into my revenue. We want to include that. So we're going to include executed new bookings and add on top of our AR number, any expansion bookings that have not pushed through revenue yet. And then we have to consider the negatives here. Do we have any downgrades that have been signed or contraction that has not pushed to revenue yet? And then finally, churn. Now, this is a bit controversial. I know there's some calculations out there that don't include churn unless that churn is happening in the current period, but I include any indicated churn because we're trying to represent a true maximum value of our ARR. And as a CFO, I cannot just put a ARR number out there when I know that a customer told me that, hey, we're going to churn in six months and that's going to be a deduct for my ARR. So I am going to include indicated churn into that number. And that then represents our current car number. And again, it's a point in time number that we're calculating. So with car, we have those components. And why do we care about this? Because this comes up in SAS valuations. We want to get that nice error multiple, but what error number do we want to use? We don't want to use the recognized trailing 12 months. We don't want to use a number from historical periods, at least a number from today, and even better, a forward-looking error number that we know is going to happen in, in decent certainty. Uh, of course, again, customers can default. So that's where CAR comes up with SAS valuations and trying to represent that maximum ARR number. So you may not call a CAR, but it is interesting concept. I think it's a important concept in, in SAS, especially if you're talking uh, acquisition and due diligence. So a little bit about CAR today. Thanks.